Welcome to the Quest Forums channel. I had an experience recently that I wanted to share here because I think it provides a good example of my approach to evangelism. Now, whether it is a good approach to evangelism is going to maybe have to be up to you to decide, but it's my style and I definitely don't have a problem with it myself. Uh, I was in a meeting, in a business meeting, and introduced myself to the group and said that I was a minister. One of the other attendees in introducing herself to me said that she does not believe in God. It's one of the first things that she said and explained that she was rather an energist, which I took to be some type of new age or pantheistic type of view. And she believes that God is not knowable and that God is not personal, uh, but that there is kind of a God or an energy or a force that is in and around everything. And that this energy provides for our good. And the greatest human good is to pursue our own individual happiness. Now, of course, my mind was running through a lot of things as she was saying this. And just kind of things to the nature of if, if God is not knowable, then how do you know that this is God, this energy that you're talking about? If God is not personal, then how can God choose to provide for our happiness? Uh, if if happiness is our highest good, then what happens when our happiness creates sadness in somebody else through the things that we do? And just kind of all the inconsistencies with the view that I was being presented with. But I didn't say any of those things. I didn't bring them up, and that's what I mean with my approach. I kind of go with relational evangelism, or what I'm choosing to call time and place evangelism. I was thinking about, would it be right to interrupt this meeting to take a minute to attempt to undermine this person's entire personal belief system? Uh, maybe that could have been effective. Much more likely, it would have been uh, offensive, both to her and to the other people that were in that room. And that style does not work for me. Now, for some people, it does because they're not offensive. They can go right up to a stranger, DJ Allen. Is a great example of this. A good friend of mine. Uh, hopefully you've seen some of the things that we've done together and definitely that you're subscribed to Homegrown Ministries. And he can do this. He can go up to a perfect stranger, start having a conversation, help them see some of the issues with their belief system in that first contact and come away from it with them not being offended at all. It's, it's amazing to watch. Uh, I don't feel like I can do that. I feel like I have to build some rapport first. I, I have to show people who I am before I can tell them the things that I know and that'll be things that they may not initially be very comfortable with. In other words, I feel like I have to build some social capital before I can spend it. Now maybe that comes as a surprise when you think about these videos or me being behind the pulpit where I can be much more direct than that. But that is because in those circumstances, I'm not having a conversation with a person. If I'm having a conversation, it's with concepts. Now, I'm not talking directly to a single person about the things that they believe. I'm talking about belief systems. And that creates just a little bit of distance, a little bit of a remove in which my hope is and my feeling is that there's less offense to be experienced. Still some, certainly, but not to the same level. It, it's not as much of a personal attack as it could easily be read. Uh, and so that's why when it comes to being one-on-one, face-to-face -on -one, with somebody, I go less of a direct route. And so my approach here with this woman was to just be kind. It was to listen to her, to rather than trying to think about what my response would be, just to keep my mouth shut and hear who she was and in a brief attempt to get to know her, to not betray any type of frustration, to just hear where she was coming from and make that a bit of that personal connection. And it did, I feel, gave me an opportunity to say one thing that I think was important. Is in a point in our conversation, a little bit later on in the meeting, uh, she turned to me and said that she had once read the entire New Testament. She was very proud of that fact, and that's certainly understandable. I mean, when you think of the number of Christians who have never even read the entire New Testament, that is an impressive feat and something worthy to have a sense of pride in. Now, her major takeaway from reading through it, she said, was that Jesus taught us through love 
rather than through guilt and fear. And there is truth to that, which I don't want to completely deny, obviously. But since I was listening to her, and I understood where she was coming from, with, again, that kind of pantheist understanding, I knew that she was not talking about it the way that Jesus meant it. And instead, that she was saying that Jesus would want us to let go of our own personal burdens and just be happy. And that's really not precisely what Jesus taught. And so, I've just made the simple comment, you know, it is kind of interesting, though, that Jesus did talk more about hell than he did about heaven. And that, I think, threw her off guard. It was not something that she was prepared for, which was good. Uh, she started to respond. I think that she was going to say something along the lines of, uh, we create our own hell here on earth. And, and I would have said something to explain that that's not what Jesus did teach. But our conversation basically ended there because I think we were both kind of feeling the awareness that if we kept going at all, that it would have become a distraction. And so we just kind of dropped it. Now, it is worthy of note uh, that what I said is disputed, <laughs> and I knew that when I said that, and not everybody agrees that Jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven, and I cover some of that in the article that goes with this video, uh, but it, it wasn't really the point, even though I do believe it. The major point is that Jesus did discuss hell, and he talked about it certainly as more than just the negative experiences that we create for ourselves here. Uh, there's a number of examples. Again, they're in the article. If you want to check that out, it's in the description below. But just the one that I want to use here in the video today is taken from Matthew chapter 25. And that's where Jesus is talking about the coming judgment where he's going to return and he's going to separate the sheep from the goats, the righteous from the unrighteous. And he's going to say to the unrighteous in verses 41 and then drop down to 46, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And that really cannot be misunderstood. You, you have to work pretty hard to think that that is talking about anything other than what Jesus is clearly referencing here, which is the fact that there is more than just this life. And if people don't follow God then they're going to go to a place of eternal punishment. Now, I do understand the issue that we have here, that we have to be very aware of. And for a lot of years in the church, there was a use of kind of a gospel of fear, where everything was about scaring people into heaven. And so there's been a reaction against that to try to keep that from being done. And certainly, this is not the heart of the gospel that we're talking about here. The heart of the gospel is that God loves us and that he sent his son for us because he wants us to be with him. And so we should desire that relationship to be restored. That's what it's really all about. But we have to bear in mind that Jesus did teach this as well about the opposite because God sent his son to die for us. He sent Jesus so that he could be the payment for our sins so that we could escape the punishment that we deserve. You, you cannot have God's mercy without first understanding God's justice and the fact that a price is required. And, and that is the point, is that the, the greatest thing is to be able to come to know God. But the other side of it is that if we refuse that, then there are going to be negative consequences for it. Now, all of this was inherent in that brief comment, just pointing out Jesus did teach on hell. And that was where I had to leave it at the time, but I do feel that it was enough to get going. My hope is that she is going to go back to the New Testament, that she's going to read it with a different set of eyes and to understand what Jesus actually said, so that at the very least, she cannot claim him as some type of representative of what it is that she believes. And hopefully further from there that she'll come to understand that he is right and that she has been wrong, that she's been following her own way rather than God's way. It may very well be that I will have a chance to continue to build that relationship and have that opportunity to explain more of these things to her. Or it's going to be that somebody else has the chance to do that. You know, like it talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 where it talks uh, uh, that one person plants a seed 
and another person waters it and, and God is the one who builds it up. Yeah, that's the what I'm hoping occurred here. Yeah, and I believe that it, it could occur, that that is what can very well come out of that if she's open to it. And uh, I'm really praying that she does because the path that she's on is not going to lead anywhere because it doesn't match what the truth is, either the truth of the Bible or the truth of the world. And happiness can really only be found by knowing Jesus Christ and trusting in him for salvation. And by remembering that Jesus saves us, we have to know that he saves us from something. There needs to be some awareness of that. Uh, so I do, the reason why I wanted to present this is because I'm hoping it'll be an encouragement. Uh, a lot of people think that they have to be able to do the more direct approach, that they have to be a Billy Graham or a DJ Allen. Uh, if DJ, if you see this, I'm sure you're going to hate that. But I had to say it. I couldn't resist uh, saying it that way. Uh, just people believe that there are some other ways to do it, that we all have a responsibility to share our faith and to be able to talk to people about God. And it doesn't always mean just going right up to strangers. A lot of times it is just about being able to speak with the people who know us and, and know that we can be trusted, that we care for them. And then that gives us an opportunity to maybe point out some of the issues and some of the areas where they're not headed in the right direction. And that it is possible that it's good to do. So if you have any thoughts on approaches to evangelism or Jesus teaching on hell, or if you have questions uh, about any of these topics or anything else in the Bible really, you can feel free to leave those down in the comments below. Thanks for checking out this video. And until next time, keep looking up.